I hope you guys enjoyed those photographs. And now let's break this down in an easy step-by-step -step tutorial so that you guys can recreate this in the studio. Step number one is to get your camera settings and your ambient exposure. And the goal here is to kill all of the ambient in the location. We want a blank canvas so that we can sculpt the light the way we want with our strobes. Now everybody's situation is gonna be different. You might have windows, you might have the house lights, but we don't want any of the light, the ambient, to dictate the final results of our photograph. So that's one of the reasons why we want a completely black frame on step one. Now in order to do that, we have to set up our camera settings first. Now in my situation, what I set up first is my shutter speed. We're in the studio, we do not need high speed sync, and I'm using the Canon R5, and it's different on camera brand to camera brand, but I shoot Canon and Sony, so if I'm shooting Sony, my flash sync speed is 250th of a second. When I'm shooting Canon, it's 200th of a second, but we definitely wanna maximize the output of our strobes, so we wanna stay within the flash sync speed. Now that setting is not gonna change for these types of photographs. After I have my shutter speed set up, I'm gonna set my aperture. Now the aperture, I set mine to 5.6 because I want a little bit more depth of field. In this case, in the studio, we're not creating bokeh photographs. So 5.6 is gonna help me get that beautiful sharpness. Now the most important one that might fluctuate and that might change is the ISO. Now in my case, I'm using ISO 100 because I'm using strobes like the FJ400 that can really maximize the power output. Now we're gonna get into it in a moment, but color gels, when you're using them with your strobes, it's gonna reduce the power output. If you have speed lights and you decide to use color gels with your speed lights, it's really gonna kill a lot of that power. So in order to maximize speed lights, if you're using these in the studio, that's where you might go into ISO 400, ISO 800, but keep in mind, if you are going to ISO 800, you're gonna to need to turn off all of the house lights and cover up all the windows because that ISO 800 is gonna start picking up that ambient. And we talked about this at the very beginning. We want a completely blank canvas. So whatever settings that you have, you definitely wanna do a test shot and you wanna make sure that you're getting a black frame so that we can move on to step two. Step number two is to add your background lights with colored gels. And in order for me to see the color gels, I love using the Savage Fashion Gray background. I find that that color really absorbs color gels the best. You can use black and you can use a white background if that's all you have, but just make sure if you're gonna use black, you're gonna have to use higher power outputs because in order for you to see those color gels, you're really gonna have to maximize the power of your strobes. Now, one of the downsides to that is that you're definitely gonna have to have more powerful strobes. So I find that gray works best. And Joe Edelman has a fantastic video as to why gray is one of the best uh, colors to have in the studio. So I'm gonna have that linked in the description. Once I have my background, I'm gonna add two lights behind my subject, 45 degrees angled at the background. And I'm gonna modify these with some $20 umbrellas. Now I know umbrellas get a bad reputation for being a little bit out of control when it comes to spreading out the light. But in this case, I wanna use that to its advantage because what I wanna do is I want light to be thrown all over the background so it can fill light and really hit that background because we're gonna add colored gels to those strobes. And so for my background lights, I was using the Westcott FJ200s. Now when you're using colored gels, one of the things you wanna keep in mind is what does your strobe have as far as the bulb design? With the FJ200s, you'll see that they have the bulb, the flash bulb is exposed here, okay? And you definitely don't wanna put colored gels right on top of that flash bulb, because then they're gonna melt, because this gets really hot. So the Westcott FJ200s comes with a metal reflector, which I love, by the way, because it has this little gel holder. So if I decide to change my mind, I can just put this little flash gel holder on. And so when I modified the background lights, I put my color gel on the metal reflector with the umbrellas 45 degrees to the background and it was able to completely change the color of the background to whatever color that I want, depending on the color gels that you have. Now, if you have speed lights, what you can use is you can use these $15 uh, color gels. Now these are on Amazon, really cheap, really awesome. I use these with my students all the time. And you can just simply cover those and recreate the same type of effect. I'll have the link uh, for these in the description if you're gonna be using speed lights for 
your shots. And once I have my lights in position 45 degrees behind the subject with the metal reflector, the color gel, and the umbrella, now at this point, I'm gonna assign those two lights to group C. So whenever I'm working with background lights, I usually have it at group C. And in a moment, we're gonna get to our key light, which will be group A, and then our fill light, which will be group B. Step number three is to add our key light. Now, one of the most important factors when you're working with colored gels is that we wanna reduce the spread of light, especially from white light, because our key light is not gonna be gelled. We have our background lights. I don't want any of this white light to hit the colored gels because if it does, it's gonna reduce the saturation and the color. So what I need to do is I need to make sure my subject is far away from the background. And I love using small modifiers. So in this case, I'm using the 24 inch Westcott Beauty Dish and I love to have it gridded to even reduce the spread of light even more. So here I'm gonna have an illustration what it looks like when I do have a grid on, and what does it look like without the grid, and you'll notice the difference between the spread of light. Now my key light's gonna be positioned in a butterfly light position, which means it's gonna be angled above the subject, angled down, and I should have catch lights in the upper top part of the eye. And I love this position because it looks flattering on most subjects and you can't go wrong with butterfly light. And once I have this in position, I'm gonna assign this light specifically to group A so I can control the power of specifically my key light. Step number four is to add fill light. And because we have already our key light set up on group A and our background light set to group C, we're gonna assign our fill light to group B. And because we're using as our key light in a butterfly light position, that's gonna create some shadows underneath the chin and on the wardrobe. And what I wanna do is I wanna fill in a little bit of those shadows with some light, but more importantly, I wanna add colored gels to that strobe. Now at the FJ400, it does have a flash dome, so it's okay if I put a colored gel over the actual flash dome, it won't melt. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna add a teal gel to this strobe so that those shadows get filled in with a little bit of color. Now I'm gonna position this light in a one by two softbox positioned in a clamshell light position. So below my subject angled up 45 degrees to add just a little hint of teal to the shadows. And so here is a progression of what it looked like when I added my colored gels, the key light, and then I added the fill light, just so you could see a comparison on how each light is influencing the final outcome of the photograph. And one thing I wanna emphasize is your color choice is very important when you're working with color gels in the studio. And so what you wanna do is you wanna look at resources, look at different color schemes, like analogous color schemes, complementary color schemes, think about the wardrobe. And one of the websites that I love using is Adobe Color CC to get inspiration for what kind of colors will work great in the studio. And if you're in the market for color gels, I love the Roscoe Color Effects Kit. They have a lot of beautiful, vibrant colors to choose from. Before we move on, I do wanna talk about today's video sponsor, which is Skillshare. Skillshare is an online learning community where millions come together to take their next step in their creative journey. Skillshare offers thousands of inspiring classes for creative people on topics including photography, productivity, business, and more. Make great use of your downtime and check out Skillshare's online classes, which include a combination of video lessons and class projects. The class that I just enjoyed watching was Graphic Design Basics Core Principles for visual design. And what I liked about this class is that I wanted to sharpen my pre-existing skills. I went to college for graphic design, but it's been a while since I've really utilized those skills. And I've been wanting to go back to kind of learn things like hierarchy, symmetry, and framing. And one of the things that really stood out in this class was how to use visual hierarchy to give order to information. And I've been using that a lot in my photography. And more importantly, I've been using a lot of symmetry. So in my last client shoot, I was looking around, looking for symmetry, and then trying to figure out how I could place my subject in this frame to create visual hierarchy. Now is the perfect opportunity to start learning new skills. The first 1,000 people who use the link in my description will receive a one month free trial to Skillshare Premium. Step number five is the final results. And if you're wondering, Eli, what is your go-to lens in the studio? And it has to be the 24 to 105 F4 Canon RF lens because it gives me so much flexibility to zoom in and out throughout the process. 
I used to love using prime lenses and those are great to create bokeh when you're outdoors, but when you're in the studio, I find myself using apertures like 5.6, f8, and now those low apertures like 1.2, 1.8 really don't matter. And being able to have so much flexibility at the 24 to 105 really makes my life so much easier in the studio. So consider that lens if you're going into studio portraits. If you guys really enjoyed this video, I have another colored gel photo shoot, more of a creative setup. I'm gonna leave you guys off with that footage so that you guys can look for it in the description and check it out. And I would love so much guys, if you guys could leave a comment, if you guys learned something, leave a comment that really helps out the channel. You guys have a beautiful day and I will see you guys on the next one.